Kristen Milioti, star of one of the most incredible, ambitious, and wild episodes of Black Mirror, I think, ever, the USS Callister. Um, you play a character, Nanette, who is digitally cloned, so half the time you spend in the real world, uh, where she's kind of meek, and so we think, and then the other half is this far-flung uh, space odyssey from, you know, like the 80s. Yeah. Did you kind of have, like, actor whiplash from going back and forth between these two worlds? No, not at all. In fact, it was the opposite, I'd say, because it's so amazing to be able to play like two different versions mm -hmm. of the same person. Um, and, you know, they were obviously still the same character and still rooted in the same place, but it's like a dream to be able to do that. Yes. Oh my God, to do the sort of like naturalism and of the office and, and who she is in that world versus the sort of like, you're on a spaceship with a blaster in the second, it's, it's like the most, it's the most ideal, it's the dream. Mm -hmm. So did you have to think of them sort of as two separate people in a way, in that sense? No, I didn't, but I, I did think of her as having like two separate modes, you know, mm -hmm. that I think that I always felt like the um, version of her on the spaceship is actually like the truest version of her. Mm -hmm. And so there were a lot more, how am I going to, like mannerisms in the office. Uh -huh. <laughs> Her, like, you know, I tried to create ways in which she, like, is, like, pushing down that yeah. spirit that she has on the spaceship because of, like, wanting to please everyone and, like, wanting to be really polite to her boss, even though, like, his hand is on her lower back and, like, all these things. So I tried to do, I tried to make that clear. that She has, like, a lot more, um, I don't know, mannerisms, developed mannerisms in the office than on the show. Um, and that boss you're trying to please yes. is Jesse Plemons, yeah. who you both were in Fargo season two. Was yeah. there any sort of like rapport that made it easier to hate on his like misogynistic character in this? I mean, no, <laughs> I love Jesse. We like barely got to work together on Fargo. We, we, mm -hmm. I think we share one scene, but we right. did see each other like out all the time because we all were living up there for like five months or up in Calgary. Um, and he's like such a wonderful guy. It is not easy to hate him. But that episode is so well written that like, I no, I didn't ever struggle in those scenes. Um, even though he's like the nicest guy in the world. Yeah, and the um, I, I was wondering because it's sort of unfortunately too often that really talented female actors have to settle for like the wife or the girlfriend or you know, the damsel. But yep. this one, Nanette has like a full arc and she's complex and has tons of agency. Do you find parts like this are super rare for you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know, like, I mean, I, I've been really lucky. I've gotten to play like a whole sort of slew of, of different types of roles that have been like very varied. Um, but it's hard to find them. I mean, I couldn't believe this because I haven't fully gotten like the opportunity to play someone like this who goes through so many things. Um, and that was a dream. I mean, this was like a dream role. I would do this role for the rest of my life. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah. Uh, how did you end up coming about the role? How did you first, uh, how was it introduced to you? I was like asked to read for it. Um, they sent me like two pages of, the, of sides and were like, we can't tell you anything about it. We just want to see you read for it. And I like made a tape and sent it. And then like the next day, they were like, okay, great. Um, and I, yeah, so I don't know. But then they told me later, they were like, we, that they had me in mind for it, but they're so secretive. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess they have to be on Black Mirror. Um, I was told nothing about it. Like they would not tell me anything. They were like, these are the two pages you can read. And it, they were so nonsensical because they like took place on the ship. Mm -hmm. And I, I was like, uh, like I was like talking about the, um, oh my God, the update patch. That's like the worm. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a wormhole. And so that was the scene. And I was, I, I had like no idea what I was talking about, but I could tell that I loved it so much. And I was like, even if it's a scene, like who cares? This show is so good. And so when I like finally got to see like what that whole episode was, I couldn't, I was beside myself. Yeah. Well, one of the lines, I don't know if it made it into that um, script that you read, but 
you have this um, incredible line, which has been memed and gift. I don't know if you've seen those, but it's yeah, awesome those about your, line you're talking about. your stolen genitals. Um, was that always in the script? Uh, oh. It's probably the most memorable yeah. moment, I think. That was always in the script. I remember reading that when they finally sent the script to me, like after I had the job and just being, <clears throat> this is <laughs> unbelievable. Like to say that, I relished that so much. Yeah, that was already in there. And right. I had nothing to do with, you know, what our commander in chief had said only weeks before. <laughs> so yeah, um, that was always in there. Wow, that, that managed to be topical. Thrilling to say. Oh. I oh. think that was like the, yeah, I, we had to move really, really fast on that show because we had so much to shoot in such a short amount of time. Um, and I think that was like one of the few times where I was like, can I have one more? Because I <laughs> love saying it so much. Right. Um, the other thing I love about, in addition to just the incredible arc of your role, is just all the send-ups of Star Trek that yeah. go on and like the classic TV. Did Were you a fan of any Star Trek series? Did you draw on that in any way for this? Oh, you know what? I, I stayed away from it a little <clears throat> I stayed away from it sort of intentionally. I watched a little bit of the old Star Trek episodes because I was like, I wanted to see if there was anything I could mine in there. But then ultimately she's so confused by it that I sort of felt like the less I knew and the more I like backed away from that, mm -hmm. the more realistic it would be because like she doesn't know what any of it is. <laughs> so yeah, so I, I, but I watched a couple, um, and the, the the way they did that in that episode, it's like such a beautiful send up. Yeah. Perfect. One of the main parts of that that I really enjoyed is just, I'm like obsessed with the swagger you have when you're sitting in the captain's chair. Because <laughs> they all have like their own pose that they do yeah. on Star Trek. Yeah. Um, I, what, what's going through your mind when you get to sit in the captain's chair? Does it feel as badass as, as it looks? Yeah, it does. Like, you know, I've been wanting to sit in a, in the captain's chair of a spaceship since I was little. And you don't really get to see that a lot as like a little girl. Um, and yeah, I mean, I've wanted to do that my whole life. I loved it. <laughs> it was one of my favorite things I've ever gotten to shoot. I did not want to get out of that chair. It felt so cool. <laughs> we could tell. Um, great and to do for that episode, like, and for her and like, it just, it was like, I'm unbelievable. Yeah, I loved it. And it kind of like, when the episode ends, I just felt myself was like, oh God, I want to follow her some more. And yeah. I did hear there's like vague spin-off talk, which has never happened for a Black Mirror episode, but is that like something you'd want to explore for Journey Further? I mean, I would in a heartbeat, in a heartbeat. I wouldn't even think about it. Yeah, I would do it in a heartbeat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, because it's, it's interesting because it's, um, Black Mirror so often has, you know, these really dark twists to them. And it is, there are plenty of dark aspects of it with misogyny and abuse of power, but um, just kind of like the last last season, um, the one they had up for the Emmys was San Junipero, yeah. which won over people because I think it was um, a really positive ending and people were inspired by it. I think the same thing happened. Do you find that with like fan interactions about this episode? Well, I think there was like a couple things this episode was so um, prescient in so many ways, you know, sort of like, and sort of presented this reality that I think a lot of us are craving, which is this like misogynistic bully being bested, mm -hmm. like being outsmarted and defeated mm -hmm. by a person who you wouldn't expect, which is, I think like a lot of us often feel very powerless in this current climate. And like, we want to believe that like one person, that it, we can do something to like affect change. And I kind of think that that episode hits on that and like it hits on the sexual harassment stuff. It hits on this like voracious fanboy culture. It sends up this classic thing. There is like, it's so adventurous and there is an element of hope at the end while remaining like pretty dark because they're stuck there forever. <laughs> like ultimately, like it's a hopeful ending, but it's still like, they're stuck. Like they'll never, I don't know if you start to like unpack it, like they'll never see their families again. You know, and even though they like live in the real world still, there's a, you know, there's also them that lives in the real 
office world, it's still pretty dark. But yeah, you see like the underdog win. Who doesn't love to mm -hmm. see that? Because we all feel like underdogs in our lives. You know, I'll, or I'll speak for myself. I do. And like to, you know, see that it's it's really uplifting while being scary and thrilling and timely. They really nailed it. Yeah, the office part, I was curious, do you, did you think about what happens after? Like, yes. you know, maybe for a spinoff, but like, does she get away with everything? Yeah. Does she have an inkling, do you think, well, of what I, is going on? I was like, her fingerprints would be discovered in his apartment. <laughs> right. She's been dusted for it, which depends. Like, it depends how that goes down. But like, <laughs> you know, she could ostensibly be like facing some extremely serious felony. And and it's like trackable. I mean, I do think that weirdly, like her in the virtual reality world goes on to like be one of the greatest of all time, right? And like yeah. becomes this like captain who is able to like really kick ass and who is intelligent and kind and like a captain. And then in the real world, like she might be like facing horrible charges and might like be sent to prison it's really wild to me like if you start to really dig in there yeah well if you do get a spin-off um which i would love to watch yeah. i would pitch um i would ask netflix to do a musical episode oh, yeah. because the first time i was introduced to you is i'm like the resident broadway nerd at gold derby and yeah. i was introduced to you through once yeah. um which you were nominate for Tony for you won the Grammy yeah. the cast album um and I know you have um we've heard you sing La on Rose on famously on How I Met Your Mother which was heartbreaking Thank um you. and I know you have a date uh, a couple dates performing with Joe's Pub yeah. this in June but yeah. are there any other um any other things down the line that you are hoping to come back and sing for oh my god well I'm working on an album right now, so I hope to like get that out within the next probably like year. I'm doing those shows, like you said, which I'm really, really excited for. Oddly enough, I sang, I was reunited with the Once cast last night. We oh, sang wow. at a gala um, honoring John Tiffany, who directed Once and now directs mm -hmm. Harry Potter. And um, we hadn't seen each other like mm -hmm. all together like that in a very, very, very long time. And we sang Falling Slowly for him, and I couldn't get through it. Oh my God. Burst into tears. It was so beautiful to like be back with everyone and be singing this thing that like that song is so brutal. <laughs> like it just <laughs> like hits you yeah. right. Here. Um but no, I would love to uh sing in as many things as possible. I mean, like my I would love to do another musical, I would love to do a musical movie or a musical TV show, like from your lips to God's ears. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're welcome, then, Netflix musical episode. Yes, exactly. Uh, Let me call them and pitch it. Yeah. <laughs> but I love, um, you know, I do these concerts every year, which is really uh, a lot of fun and really wonderful. But yeah, I'm, I would do that in a heartbeat. Um, do you have, in terms of theater like that, a lot of actors have like a list of, like a list of dream roles. Do you have that? For yourself or in a type of role of movie or do you prefer the process of creating something new um i prefer the process of creating something new that being said if i had to like look through like roles that i've always been like yeah what would that be like i mean i've always wanted to play um sally bowles in cap like always since i mm -hmm. knew what cabaret was um i've always wanted to play abigail in the crucible I always feel like she's given, she's always given like the short shrift somehow and played like a villain. And I don't know. Um, I like, I, I don't know. I, I would love to do, there's a part of me that's like, I would love to do like a musical that no one, that I would like normally not ever do. Like Maria mm. in the Sound of Music. Like mm. never knock on my door for that, but like I'd love to try it. <laughs> or My Fair Lady, I would love to do My Fair Lady too. Well, maybe once Lauren Ambrose is done, you can yeah, uh, take over. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're coming up at the end of our time here. So just uh, with Black Mirror, I've kind of noticed you, you have a lot of stage experience and you have a, a lot of TV experience. Um, and now this is a TV episode, but it's really a feature length yeah. uh, 
project, uh, I mean, it's up for TV movie. Um, was there something about, what, what was your biggest takeaway from the experience as an actor? Did you learn anything about yourself while you did it? Yeah, I mean, I think we learn. I learned that we underestimate ourselves. And I learned that I was, uh, you know, as I was doing it, I, I remember thinking like, I never knew how badly I wanted to do something like this, where it's just like a really, she's like a very human character put in this like sci-fi fantasy world. And I thought, I think it is so funny that it's like basically like the cast of The Office trying to win at space. <laughs> Like it's like the best of both worlds where you're like in this action thriller, but it's like what a girl who works at Dunder Mifflin would do. It, it, <laughs> I had no idea till I got there. I was like, this is the thing I have waited for. This is like right in the Venn diagram of like all the things that I love of like, I love Kill Bill, but I also love The Office. And obviously it's not like as comedic as The Office, but I don't know, it, I, I learned that I, had been waiting for that for like years and loved it. That's awesome. That's, that's like the honest to God truth. It's <laughs> a cool lesson. It was just like, as I was sitting there, like I remember like when we were, um, when I'm like asking Ozzy for his blaster, like on the foreign planet, I was like, this is the coolest thing. This is the coolest thing ever. And like the thing with the arachnojacks, I mean, just, it just yeah. cool. I don't know. I learned that I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to do that forever. That's awesome. Well, um, I think we'll we'll leave on that. Thanks for hanging out with us, um, yeah. and I'm I'm gonna start a petition for the musical episode. Yes. So, well. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was so nice to meet you. Thank you, Kristen. You too. Yeah. Bye. Bye.